I think um, what might be helpful at this point is a little bit of context about your career journey. Uh, one thing I'm curious about is, okay, you're, you said part of your role is this time in the history of humanity where the one world government is taking over, but uh, you've had this sort of, every time I talk to you, you, you tell me like, oh, I was hanging out with some famous founder or, you know, some interesting person. So let's, let's try to mesh these two stories together of your okay. like, career arc and your, and this, you know, channeling stuff. How how I got into technology. There I was, very well paid executive in the music business. Loved my job. <laughs> I had a job that people would kill for. And so one day a friend of mine calls me. And I had been I told you I'd had this hand injury. It was a, it was RSI, it was a computer injury. So I'd been off computers for a while. Although, you know, I'd worked for a German company, so we you know, we were we had computers. I loved them. So anyway, this friend of mine calls me one day, an associate, and she said, we have breakfast. And she said, I want to start the first Interactive Awards Festival. It was 1994. I said, what? And she said, let's go back to my office. I'll show you. I hadn't been on a computer in a couple of years. Not, not really. I mean, I'd been on, not on the internet. I hadn't been on the internet. So we go back to her office, and graphics had just hit. She turns on the computer, and this was like... I said, this is like channeling. This is going to give everybody the ability to get information from anywhere. I said, this, this is my industry. This is my industry. And I always knew I'd be working in an industry that hadn't been invented yet. Even when I graduated, from, I knew that. And this was it. So I resigned from my big job. <laughs> and the president of the company who had given me the job said, you're leaving, here. you're leaving to do what? I said, interactive. He said, what's that? I had to explain it to him. It was Sony Music, by the way. I was at Sony Music. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I, I got into interactive and she said, yes, yeah, so, you know, write write an entry form. I said, well, we, we don't know anything about interactive. We need, we need to put together an advisory board. She said, okay. I said, let me call Bill Gates. Huh? <laughs> and I did. I picked up the phone and I called Bill Gates. <laughs> he took the call. He was fascinated. He sent us our first advisor. So I started calling everybody. And I had this killer advisor. Everybody wanted to be on my advisory board. Everybody, because it was who's who of the industry. And we were having our first official meeting. And um, was he there yet? No, he wasn't there yet. I had, I had one spot left. And everybody wanted to be on this board. Everybody was bugging me to be on my board. <laughs> I had one spot left, and I'd been swapping emails with the Stanford College stu Stanford student, master's candidate, and I, e I emailed him one day, and I said, "I'm going to put give you the last position on the board," and he said, <laughs> and I sent him the, uh, the you know, list of the other people who are on the board, and he said, "I don't have a company." I said, "You will." He said, "I can't afford to fly into New York for your meetings." I said, "I'll get them sponsored." <laughs> Everybody was about to kill me because the last position went to this Stanford student and they said you have to you have to tell him he can't be on the board and you have to and I said by the time we do this festival in 1996 he is going to be the he will have a company he will be the most famous person on my board I am not kicking him off and they used to call him the Bonnie's little friend <laughs> you know who it was it was Jerry Yang founder of Yahoo mm. I knew I knew, but I always know things before they're people. They just don't believe me because they can't see what I can see. So it was our first meeting and it was February and everybody flew in for it. And they were talking about in February of 95, people are talking about CD-ROM and CDI and CD this and CD that, blah, blah, blah. And there was a, a reporter called Michael France who was writing for PC Week who said, can I cover the meeting? Because he wanted to talk to some hundred, you know, the big shots who were there. I said, sure. So they're talking about CD Brahmins, CDI, and CD this and CD that. And I said, well, what about the web? And they said, of course, there's going to be a category for the web. And I said, well, we can't have a category for the web. We're doing this festival in June of 1996. By June of 1996, I hate to tell you people, CD ROM, CDI, CD this, and CD bullshit is all going away. It's all going to be about the web. The web is going to take over, which was heresy. In February, that was of pretty early for the. That was before was most people very, were even online, though, right? Yep. 
And Michael, Michael came over to me and said, are you serious? I said, the web's going to take over. All this stuff is going away. It's limited application technology. It's bullshit. And he wrote his article about that. So the article was published. He was immediately hired away by Time Magazine to be their tech reporter. And after, when the article came out, I'm sitting in the office and I the phone rings and my assistant says, it's for you. I said, who is it? I said, Steve Jobs. I said, who is it? It's Steve Jobs. I said, who is it really? He says he's Steve Jobs. It was Steve Jobs. So he's, And I had to test him. I said, all right, name Nolan Bushnell's oldest child. And he told me, and I said, okay, you passed it. You, you passed the Steve Jobs <laughs> test. <laughs> well, she's a friend of mine, and I knew that Steve Jobs knows who she is. And he passed it. And I had to ask something obscure that only Steve Jobs would know. Do you know the name of Nolan Bushnell's oldest child? He's got seven kids. I don't even don't. know who that is. Nolan Bushnell, Atari. Okay. Wrong. Wrong. In fact, I once asked her, when I first met her, I said, I said, can I ask you a question about your dad? She said, so people always have a question about my dad. She said, what's your question? I've heard them all. I said, how did he come up with Pong? She said, you know, nobody's ever asked me that question. I said, how did he do it? She said, he was sitting in a meeting. He was really bored, so he kept hitting the return of the energy and and that's how Pong was born. Isn't that awesome? Uh, wow. So well, anyways, he, so Steve Jobs, called, all he wanted to talk about was the web. He saw what I saw. Mm -hmm. He wasn't back at Apple yet, remember. And he used to call me every day, Bonnie's your boyfriend. All he wanted to talk about was the web. He knew too. We both knew. And, but like I said, not, not a lot of people saw it in February of 1995. Most people didn't.